a disaster movie that angered a dictator, an 80s classic that wreaked havoc across Scandinavia, and one iconic flick that was banned by its own director. Keep watching for more of the sci-fi movies that were banned around the world. The Matrix sparked backlash when it was first released in Egypt, as several Islamic publications interpreted the film as supporting Zionism. Egypt also banned its follow-up, The Matrix Reloaded, but the reasoning behind that decision is somewhat murkier. The country's Department of Monitoring Artistic Products partially attributed the ban to scenes of excessive violence, which is a common red flag in Middle Eastern countries. However, the committee also noted that the film deals explicitly with issues of creation and existence related to the three monotheistic religions we all respect and believe. This is all in reference to the central theme of Reloaded, which comes to a head near the end of the film, when the architect informs Neo that he is a product of the Matrix. Your life is the sum of a remainder of an unbalanced equation inherent to the programming of the Matrix. Despite Morpheus' belief that Neo is the one who will dismantle the virtual world, this is actually an illusion designed by the architect to maintain control of the simulation. When essentially given the choice to either submit to the creator or act of his own free will, Neo chooses the latter, defying his symbolic role in creation. It's not hard to see why a country devoted to staunch monotheism would be less than thrilled with this idea. District 9 held nothing back in its allegory of South African apartheid, but it was actually a different country, Nigeria, that greeted Neil Blomkamp's modern masterwork with a hefty backlash. Dora Akinyili, Information Minister of Nigeria, believed that the film portrayed Nigerians as, quote, cannibals, criminals, and prostitutes, and that this, in his words, denigrated Nigeria's image. He specifically mentioned that the corrupt Nigerian gang leader is named Obasanjo, which is nearly identical to the last name of the former president of Nigeria, Alushigan Obasanjo. To Akinyili, this felt like a direct attack on Nigeria, associating the nation with the movie gang's heinous actions illegal weapons trading, prostitution, and the killing of aliens for religious rituals. Akinyili ordered all copies of the film to be confiscated from local theaters, insisted on an apology from Sony Pictures, and asked the studio to cut out any derogatory content featuring Nigeria. Of course, that didn't happen, but the film continued to be criticized for its portrayal of Nigerians. In one editorial, Nigerian writer Tezu Cole wondered why Blomkamp chose to depict his Nigerian characters as caricatures. However, actor Eugene Kubanyiwa, who portrayed Obasanjo, did not have an issue with the way Nigerians were portrayed. He said, it's not like Nigerians do eat aliens. Aliens don't even exist in the first place. Roland Emmerich's disaster movie 2012 was a massive hit at the box office, but it didn't make its way to North Korea. Not legally, anyway. In 2012, North Korea's government declared that the country was about to enjoy a very prosperous year. Not only was 2012 the 100th birthday of the nation's founder, Kim Il-sung, but it was the first year in the reign of its new supreme commander, Kim Jong-un. As such, the government promised the advent of a more powerful military, an end to the country's hunger crisis, and the evolution of North Korea as an economic giant. Now, technically, all foreign media is banned in North Korea. However, according to a study done by Intermedia in 2017, media piracy is rampant in the country and Kim Jong-un's rise to power came with a crackdown on international productions. 2012 arrived at just the wrong time, directly challenging the country's success by portraying the apocalyptic mythology around the year 2012 as real. It also implied that the government was killing off whistleblowers. Perhaps that last part hit a bit too close to home. As reported by Japanese newspaper Asahi, numerous citizens found watching bootleg copies of the film were arrested and faced up to five years in prison. E.T. Home Phone E.T. the Extraterrestrial is well known for inspiring a generation of children with an equal mix of terror and wonder, so it only makes sense that a censorship board would come along and ruin the whole thing. E.T. was banned across Scandinavia for children at various age levels. Sweden banned it for children 11 or younger, Finland for kids 8 or younger, and Norway for those 12 or younger. The Swedish Board of Film Censorship believed a threatening and frightening atmosphere pervaded the film. They also claimed that it portrayed adults as the enemies of children. Well, if censors were trying to combat that latter notion, they spectacularly miscalculated. Some local children hit the streets in protest of the ban, while others lied about their ages so they could get into the theater. What's your name? Stud. Vincent. Um, adult man. Vincent Adult Man. Years later, when Chief Censor Gunnel Arbach looked back on E.T., 
She clarified that the matter was actually all about subtitles, which she noted that young children couldn't read. Arbeck claimed that they never dub films in Sweden, and so many of the film's youngest viewers would be unable to understand the dialogue. This reason is all the more bizarre given that Arbeck never mentioned it when the ban was first enacted. Clearly, Scandinavia wanted people to think of the children, but if they had been, they probably wouldn't have forbidden them from seeing the film. A Swedish newspaper later argued that censors should consult with children before banning films targeted at them, while Arbach herself admitted in 2007 that movies probably don't have a negative effect on young viewers. You might be forgiven for not remembering G.I. Joe Retaliation. Still, the movie's total forgettability didn't stop Pakistan from nixing its release back in 2013. The Central Board of Film Censors in the country went so far as to call G.I. Joe Retaliation anti-Pakistan. Many of the board's objections to the film seem to come from its inciting incident, in which the president of Pakistan has been assassinated. The president of the United States subsequently orders the G.I. Joe team to extract a nuclear warhead from the country. Get me the G.I. Joes. After an extended battle between the Joes and some Pakistani guards, many of whom are quickly shot down, the soldiers take the weapon and disarm it. The Board of Film Censors claim that the film portrays a negative image of the country, and Pakistani theater Atrium Cinema said that the film portrays the country as a failed state. Indeed, the film depicts Pakistan as having ineffective security and poor leadership and treats Pakistani lives as disposable. It's no surprise that officials were angered by the film and swiftly restricted it from being screened in the country. Vietnam's National Film Review Board stoked controversy when it banned the movie adaptation of The Hunger Games, just days before it was slated to be released in theaters. In a public statement, the board called the games depicted in the movie, quote, too violent and ruthless. She also noted that the games being televised made them even worse, as it allowed viewers to see directly the deadly fight. Suzanne Collins's original Hunger Games novel was a major success in Vietnam, especially with young people, and many fans were eager to see the film adaptation. By banning the film, Vietnam ironically set the stage for the kind of uproar it was hoping to suppress. The Hunger Games franchise would see further censorship with its third installment, The Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 1. In Thailand, five young protesters raised the series' three-fingered hand signal in defiance of dictator general Preu Chan Ocha, and many more soon followed. We are sending this three fingers message to people of U.S. and U.S. government to help us. The dissidents were arrested, and Thai distribution company Apex Group subsequently pulled the film from certain theaters. One of the most controversial films of all time, Stanley Kubrick's A Clockwork Orange is no stranger to censorship, and after 50 years, it's still churning stomachs around the world. But the most memorable ban on the film actually came at the behest of Kubrick himself. In England, the film was approved by censors without a problem and became a huge box office hit, yet immediately garnered controversy for glorifying violent crime. It was even tied to several high-profile incidents that resembled the misdeeds of the film's main character, Alex. After the courts insisted that the movie had inspired the crimes, Kubrick received countless death threats and endless harassment. In response, he asked Warner Brothers to pull the film and disallow any future screenings in the UK. In 2000, a year after Kubrick's death, the film was unbanned and re-released in British cinemas. A Clockwork Orange was also banned in South Africa, Singapore, Malaysia, Spain, Brazil, and Canada, among other countries. However, all of these nations eventually allowed the film to debut, though with some censorship and strict adult ratings. Film censorship rarely generates headlines these days, but when you're a part of Mega Studio Disney, you make the news. Appropriately, every single installment in Phase 4 of the Marvel Cinematic Universe has been banned in at least one country. Both Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness and Eternals were banned in the Middle East for featuring gay characters. Multiverse of Madness has a flashback featuring America Chavez's two mothers, and Eternals character Fastos is married to another man. Marvel made headlines for refusing to cut a kiss between the latter couple, something Disney had previously done to get blockbusters past international censors. Online, many fans criticized Disney for this practice and Eternals marked a notable step forward. Marvel upheld this standard by refusing to cut America's mothers out of Multiverse of Madness for the same reason. China has also banned every single Phase 4 movie to date. Black Widow passed the censors, but was withheld from theaters in order to put a greater focus on domestic films during the 100th anniversary of the establishment of China's Communist Party. Neither Eternals nor Shang-Chi were released because of anti-China comments by cast and crew members. Spider-Man No Way Home failed to secure a Chinese release after Sony refused to remove the Statue of Liberty from the film's climax, and Multiverse of Madness features the Epoch Times in the background of a few quick shots. 
This is a publication that is quite critical of the Chinese government. Even though its screen time is brief, its inclusions still seem to be too much for China's censors. Decades before the Dark Universe tried and failed to bring Universal's lineup of classic movie monsters together, one of comedy's greatest duos perfected the formula. Abbott and Costello Meet Frankenstein was one of Universal's biggest hits in 1948 and inspired an entire series of crossovers. It was an unlikely pairing, and it led to an even more unlikely ban in Finland. On paper, this horror comedy sounds a bit hokey. However, it turned out to be far scarier than anyone had anticipated. Combining punchlines with genuine scares, the film fully resembles a universal creature feature. It has spooky lighting design, a dramatic score, and a high body count. Theaters showing the movie were plagued by crying kids and walkouts, although that hasn't done much damage to its reputation. Roger Ebert and Quentin Tarantino have both cited this movie as among their all-time favorites. Finland was once notorious for censoring horror comedies. Not only did these films put bloodshed front and center, a major reason for most censorship cases in Finland, but they were seen as using violence as entertainment. As such, Abbott and Costello Meets Frankenstein was slapped with Finland's highest rating, KK, and banned for many years.